Ahoy hoy and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to go over dank memes from the dank memes from dank <laughs> dank memes from the dank site from site dank memes. <laughs> dank memes from dank memes from site 19. <laughs> Why was that so hard? I'm like, is that the name of the subreddit? I've said dank meme so many times it has lost all meaning. That was fantastic. I had to actually Google it to be like, wait, did I screw this up in my head? No, it is dank memes from site 19. Dank memes from dank site. Dank memes dank. Oh, yeah. Okay, moving on. Me trying to write a 6K contest entry before the theme is announced. Get ready, everyone. He's about to do something stupid. Uh, not really. Um, the, the SCP, especially the, uh, uh, you know, I, I will call them XK contests, uh, XK end of the world scenario contests, but the XK contests have in recent years had such general and broad themes, they might as well have no theme at all. And they give a little bit of directions, so that's for people who have no direction. But if you have an article idea, you don't need to worry about the theme. Like taboo was uh, is a is a fairy tale SCP <laughs> uh, with a theme that's supposed to be history. It's interpreted so broadly. Just do whatever you want. If you have another idea, a really good idea, just try to include just enough of the theme, just a tiny smidgen, and then make sure and draw attention to it in your author post, and you're fine. I was talking to uh, a member of staff just last night about it, and uh, I, I think I might have pissed him off because I had some critique about it, but that's not the important part. The important part is uh, that they were saying that, you know, broader is better. They don't want to give any limitations. I'm like, the SCP format is all about limitations, and trust me, the whole... The, one of the things I've noticed, and I've won two or three contests, um, but one of the things I have uh learned i and i think this is very important to know is that limitations actually re like really help refine down uh the quality of a, of a piece and like the quality of whatever it is you're going to come up with period so i think honestly more narrow is better although for i th I, I don't know that it would be better for that i'm annoyed that the XK contest is so broad, but if it was narrower with as many entries as there are now, it, it might be a lot, there might be a lot of retread ground, but then maybe not. I don't know. The old time in the olden times, it was like science fiction, urban legends, that kind of stuff, the kind of stuff that you expect to see on an SCP wiki, um, horror as a, as a theme, like a, a genre theme, not nature. I'm just saying that's that's my opinion on it, but my opinion is one of many opinions on it. So, moving on, but but for the particular topic of this, write whatever you want to because the theme right now and for the last couple of con of XK contests has basically been meaningless. The foundation or something. I don't know. I have never read SCP. I you know I feel like there could be a lot more done with uh the with. Uh, the word the found with the word foundation if it wasn't for is it the Isaac Asimov series I think it is um as like it's a nice war it's a, it's a nice double meaning word right the foundation of you know of this or that or the other thing you can talk about it more than a double meaning um it's, you know, it's, you can be talking about a building's foundation you can be talking about the foundation of an organization a movement and so on and so forth or you could be talking about the SCP Foundation, which you start to wonder why it's called a foundation. Is it gallivant? Was it gallivanting at some point as a uh, a charitable foundation? I don't know. What are the Mario Brothers' views on redactions? Mario says redactions disrupt the flow of the article unless thematically appropriate and rare. I always say unless appropriate and rare, <laughs> even if they're appropriate, sometimes they still disrupt the flow if they're constant. And you're like, what does that mean? Well, the, the, thematically appropriate, 
uh, basically means you need to have a very specific vision of what your article is going to be and decide early on whether or not that means it's going that like does the redaction enhance your article because if it doesn't enhance your article it's taking away period because they're distracting to a lot of people not necessarily everyone but your job as an author is to have a broad appeal like okay that's not necessarily true i want to be clear here because there's a lot of nuance to that statement to be the most successful author you can be, you need to have a broad appeal. There are plenty of people who make a living and there are plenty of people who don't make a living, but enjoy writing to specific audiences. And that's fine too. But I always try to suggest to people to find the broadest audience of uh, possible people and redactions for a lot of people redact the flow of an article, period. And so you, you're making a trade off one way or the other. And the real question becomes, how much does it improve the article to include it? If it doesn't improve the article at all, you're just getting the negatives out of it. If it's an idea you lack, cover that crap in black. <laughs> Fair enough, Luigi. Also, I saw this and I, I, uh, I wasn't sure how to respond. Uh, I, I think my exact uh, thought was, uh, what is this? Uh, I don't even. Um, all right, sure. That reminds me, I need to, I have a, a, a program now that, or not a program, but a service now that I can use to make pictures of, like, actual images into uh, more cartoony things for the animated series I'm working on. Because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take actual Creative Commons images and then cartoonify them and use them as background or foreground objects. That's the plan, anyway. And I think if you saw the last one I did, uh, the, the only one I really did, um it, it works i think it works really well to me at least so um i should do that with my face and put it on a t-shirt i don't think a lot of people would get it but i think some people might <laughs> starts reading another article about a foundation made anomaly the anomaly backfires and becomes a threat me what yeah uh <laughs> anomalies are, are, are backfire and become threats what well, welcome to the world i guess you are a human that's born with superpowers. You're in the SCP universe. The GOC are the ones that find you first. I don't actually think this is that big of a deal because um, while the SCP Foundation and GOC do contain a and do and or destroy a lot of anomalies, I think there's probably many more that are loose in the world. I think that's sort of the whole point of the series is like, okay, here's one we have in containment. And, and, and a lot of them tell stories of what had they did before they were in containment or after they were in containment or after they escaped containment. There's many, many anomalies that are just out in the world and about. Although you would want to keep your head down generally. So there is that <laughs> myth. The highest honor for SCP meme creators is featuring on SCP on Dr. Sumerian's meme review. The highest honor for SCP meme creator, and this is a fact, is appearing on the front of Google Images when searching for SCP memes. I think this is, uh, I think both of these things are probably not the highest honor. I, what is the highest honor? Do people enjoy your memes? If yes, you have succeeded at memory. Uh, but I, I do, I do sometimes feel like people uh, treat uh, featuring on this one of my videos as perhaps a little bit more significant than I really think it should be. But whatever makes people happy, let them be happy. That's the way I look at it. Uh, so I don't really like be like, hey, what's what's what you talking about? But uh, if people enjoy it, that's great. I'm glad to bring some joy to people's lives. The people who believe the myth or the fact, to be honest with you. <laughs> if people enjoy it, great. I'm glad that it makes them happy. Uh, and I hope that it continues to make them happy, to be honest with you yeah well the exact opposite here man there are a lot of spelling errors in the in the memes this time around sad dyslexia noises <laughs> as somebody who um i don't have dyslexia but i do have dysgraphia uh as somebody who has experienced these sorts of problems and and how unavoidable they are like it's just it's the most frustrating thing ever uh, it is frustrating especially when other people notice it and make a point of it um because you're trying your best you didn't deliberately put you didn't deliberately do that wrong you know 
Uh, for me, it's more like I didn't deliberately make this impossible to read when I was you know, writing with my hand. I can type fine. So it's it's a particular kind of dysgraphia. When I'm writing with a pencil, man, letters, I get I do the letters backwards. I can read perfectly fine, though. That's the other half of it. But I write letters backwards. I, I have to sometimes just if I'm with a B or a D, sometimes I just have to uh, lowercase ones. I just have to write them and then see if it looks right. That's that's my sense. And when I was in school, writing anything was um, it was physically taxing. That's true. But it was also mentally taxing because there's nothing like writing a word and like it, it, it depended. Sometimes it would, you could get, I could get into a flow and it would be all right ish. It would still be really messy. But sometimes i would get into it where i'd be like a like a five letter word and three of the letters i would screw up somehow just a little bit and then man it's it's rough and i i hate that i'm uh, the i mean i don't consider that with people with spelling errors in their stuff especially considering the fact that you could do a lot of spell checking lately also i don't necessarily uh i don't give myself an excuse on that unless i'm writing with a pencil because i can type fine so that's nice. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things that I really wish I had been, uh, people, my school teachers had noticed when I was still in school. Everybody just thought I was super smart and super lazy. Cool bug facts. The E in SEV Foundation stands for Ethical Treatment of D-Class and Anomalies. But wait, cool bug. There's no E in SCP Foundation. This is about people trying to make an SCP-6000 article as, like, a novice author versus, you know, one of the more, uh, I'm not going to say professional because most people don't get paid on the wiki. I, almost no one does. But uh, elite author? is it, it feels wrong to say that. But, yeah, I, honestly, this is bullshit. DJ Cat just puts out great articles on a consistent basis, and his his stories are so well crafted he is one of the best i believe one of the best authors on the scp wiki however people who are novice authors have created some of also the greatest works on the scp wiki maybe a little less consistently but it's still possible so just write your article anyway thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video scroll down and hit that subscribe button and then head on over to patreon.com forward slash d this chair is creaking i need to stop that but head on over to patreon.com why don't you edit that stuff out i want it to seem natural damn it head on over to patreon.com forward slash d and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has including dr j redacted and sinjariki you have both pledged at a hundred dollars it's nice to know that i'm not alone out here and I will see you all again on Thursday. It took me a second to remember what day it is.